So this is the very final video in this mini course I've created for you, Introduction to the Human Skeleton. So I'll talk about the axial skeleton in this video. So this is the last segment of the skeleton that we haven't seen yet. And so we've already seen the upper limb, we've seen the lower limb, and now we're talking about the skeletal structures that are in the middle of the body. So I'll provide an overview of the bones we find in the axial skeleton. And for each bone or group of bones, I'll talk about a few key landmarks or important facts about the bones. And then at the end, just like we did for the upper and the lower limb, I'll provide a little practice quiz to help you embed this information into your brain so you can use it. So on this slide, I have various components of the axial skeleton. Top left, I have the skull, and the skull consists of cranial bones and facial bones, which we'll see here in a minute. Top right is the sternum, commonly known as the breastbone, and so you can see the ribs attaching to the lateral part of the, of the sternum. And then at the bottom of the slide uh, are the vertebrae. And so uh, far left, we have a cervical vertebra. In the middle is a thoracic vertebra. And then far right is a lumbar vertebra. And so we'll see there are a few other segments here that I'll talk about. Uh, but these are components of the vertebral column. So basically, the vertebral column is, is your backbone common in common everyday language. And the bones uh, to the right in the image are from superior to inferior. So we actually have seven cervical vertebrae, and these are the vertebrae that we find in the neck. Then we go inferior to that, and also in the image is the next one down, we have 12 thoracic vertebrae, and these are the, uh, the vertebrae of the uh, middle back, essentially. Then we have lumbar vertebrae, we have five of those, vertebrae of the lower back. Sacrum, uh, these are five fused bones, and these are uh, located adjacent to the pelvis. Uh, medial to the pelvis, and then we have coccygeal vertebrae. These are four fused vertebrae, and these are the uh, commonly known as the tailbone. And so again, in the image, we have cervical, the very topmost that's in the image, and then uh, coccygeal vertebrae, the lower, uh, lowest in the image to the right. So listed from superior to inferior, and the numbers associated with each region there. So there they are with labels, so you can see a little closer view of the bones as well. And so you can see that they're, they have distinct shapes depending on the region they come from. Cervical, for example, has these things called transverse foramen, which are the uh, openings, the holes you see adjacent to the, the vertebral body. And then you can see how thoracic is a little bit bigger than a cervical. Lumbar is bigger than a thoracic. And then the sacrum has an altogether different appearance than cervical, thoracic, or lumbar. And then lastly, we see the, the relatively small uh, coccyx or co coccygeal vertebrae. These are four fused coccygeal vertebrae. That's also a little bit of a tongue twister. So a typical uh, vertebra has various components, but I'd like to highlight just a few for you here. Um, so the backbone again, um, vertebral column. And so we actually have an anterior part of this and a posterior part of a vertebra. And then we have a laterally projecting component. So the B represents body. This is the most anterior part of a typical vertebra. Whereas the spine, which is S, is the more posterior part, the posterior aspect of a typical vertebra. And that's the part you can actually feel on your cells that sticks out, uh, makes up what you know is the backbone. And if you, you bend forward a little bit, you can feel that spine projecting from your back. Uh, most posterior aspect of, the, of a vertebra. And then the T represents a transverse process. These are projections that project laterally or landmarks that project laterally from a vertebra. So again, body is anterior, spine is posterior, and transverse process projects laterally. So on this lumbar vertebra, you can see the B that, as the body, the spine as, as S, and then transverse process. There are various other components that we can take a look at as well. And if you want to check out my blog, I have these labeled for you. The sternum is commonly known as the breastbone. Um, so you can see it there to the image and the image to the right. And you can see the ribs actually attaching via cartilage called costal cartilage. So it also attaches to the clavicle, uh, to the lateral part of the superior aspect of the sternum. And there's the attachment there. Please excuse the breadcrumb or or a little uh, feather, whatever that is on the screen. But we have the clavicle attaching there uh, just lateral to uh, the jugular notch. And so you can see, the, in this case, it's the, the right clavicle. We, of course, have a right and a left clavicle. 
uh, of course commonly known as the, as the collarbone. So then ribs, another component of the axial skeleton. So, so far we have vertebral column, we have the sternum, and now we have the ribs. We have 12 pa pairs of ribs, and so the ribs actually attach posteriorly to the vertebral column, and then anteriorly they attach to the sternum. However, do note that some ribs don't make it to the sternum. They're, they're called floating ribs. They just attach to the vertebral column, but they don't make an anterior attachment at all. And then some ribs al also share cartilage with other ribs um, to attach to the sternum. So the ribs serve various functions. They protect the underlying organs like the lungs, uh, various digestive organs, stomach, pancreas, of, of course the heart. They provide a structural support for us. Uh, they also provide muscle attachment sites for various muscles, including, uh, for example, uh, some, the six-pack muscle and some of our abdominal muscles. Uh, they attach here. Also intercostal muscles, which help us breathe along with the diaphragm. So note, uh, I alluded to this just a moment ago, but we have some ribs that share cartilage and some ribs that have their own cartilage. So we have true ribs and false ribs. True ribs have their own cartilage to attach to the lateral part of the sternum. And so those are actually ribs one through seven. And so I have a T there depicting a true rib. Then we have some false ribs which basically share cartilage with other ribs to attach to the sternum. And I have the F there below to indicate that. And again, we have floating ribs. They, they just have a posterior attachment to the vertebral column, but they don't attach to the sternum um, at all. Then we have this kind of funky bone called the hyoid bone. This bone is inferior to the mandible, but it's superior to the voice box, and it provides attachment for... Uh, various muscles, including a muscle that's simply just named for its attachment to the hyoid bone called the stylohyoid muscle. And then this bone is unique in that it really doesn't directly articulate with any other bone. Uh, other bones do. For example, the femur makes a tight attachment or connects to uh, the tibia. But this bone is, is different in that regard. So then we find the skull, the last component here of our axial skeleton. Uh, the skull has cranial and facial bones, and so you can see the C depicting cranial and then the F depicting facial bones. So here are uh, the cranial and facial bones uh, broken down by category. So you can see some names of cranial bones like the frontal bone, temporal bone, uh, parietal bone. So right now if you smack yourself in the forehead, you're hitting uh, your frontal bone, so to speak. Uh, you got to go through your skin to get to the bone, of course. And then facial, we have the mandible, for example, which is your lower jaw, and then your upper jaw is your maxilla, and some other bones are listed there. These are facial bones. So cranial bones surround and protect the brain. They basically do not move. They're, they're fixed in position. Um, facial bones do move. They provide structural support for the face, um, muscle attachment sites, etc. And we have some degree of movement when we talk about facial bones. For example, the mandible moves. Uh, the, the uh, lower jaw muscle, or lower jaw bone, excuse me. So there we go, cranial facial bones again. You can also see a close-up view of the orbit, just showing you various components of the skull here. There's a lot of structures here to know, uh, various openings and fissures, etc. But there's a view of the orbit, which is where the eyeball sits in real life. And then we have some nerves that uh, attach uh, to, to muscles that surround the eyeball and to the eye itself. You, you may have heard of the optic nerve, cranial nerve 2, which goes directly to the eyeball, and it goes through that little opening you can see in the very back of the orbit uh, called the optic canal. You can see sutures of the skull, and these are parts of the skull that used to be softer and more cartilaginous, and then they seal, seal over and ossify uh, shortly after we're, we're born, uh, but they provide a soft spot uh, so that the baby can pass through the birth canal. So you can see the coronal suture there and the sagittal suture. The coronal suture actually divides the frontal, frontal from this, excuse me, the frontal bone uh, from the two parietal bones behind it. So frontal bone forehead and then parietal is behind that uh, first suture that you see there. Then you can see an inferior view of the skull here. You can see some, uh, various foramina, which allow for nerves and blood vessels to pass through en route to their target or leaving their targets. So let's go ahead and practice here. So I have some labels. 
So you want to answer, uh, what is the bone or group of bones? And what are some landmarks or facts about the bones? So what we can do is I'll go to a slide. Uh, you can, of course, pause the video if you need to, to, to give yourself a chance to think. I'll provide a, a short pause, a potentially awkward pause, before I give you the answer. And then we'll, we'll dive in and do the answers. So number one, and what is this group of bones? And what do you remember about this group of bones? Maybe the regions that you find here. And uh, see if you can list those from superior to inferior. So of course, this is the vertebral column. And so the upper part of the image shows the cervical vertebra. Then we go down one, we have thoracic. We have lumbar then next. Then we have the sacrum. Then we have the coccyx made up of fused coccygeal vertebrae. So cervical vertebrae are in the neck, then thoracic are basically middle back or upper back. Then we have uh, lumbar, lower back. Sacrum is uh, associated with the pelvis, medial to the pelvis. And then we have the tailbone, coccygeal vertebrae. So what are the components that are shown with red rectangles here? So if you said spine, uh, for the one that's uppermost in the picture, and then the body of the vertebra is lower. Uh, it's the lower shape in the lower part of the picture. So spine is a posterior structure, and then the vertebral body is an anterior structure. What is this bone? So if you said rib, you're correct. And uh, some things you may recall, too, is a rib attaches posteriorly to the vertebral column. Uh, technically on the body in the transverse process of the vertebral column, and then anteriorly, it makes its way via cartilage to attach to the lateral part of the sternum. Number four, what bone is attaching there, and what is the attachment? So if you said clavicle, in this case it's the right clavicle, the collarbone, is attaching to the uh, lateral part of the sternum, which is commonly known as the breastbone, and you can see uh, the costal cartilage attaching, which is the rib cartilage, attaching to the lateral part of the sternum. What are these? What are the shapes? So if you said cranial bone, uh, top uh, square there, um, and then you said facial bone, bottom square on the mandible technically, you'd be correct. And lastly, what is this bone? That's the hyoid bone. And so it's located in inferior to the mandible. It doesn't really directly articulate with any other bone. Provides some muscle attachment sites. Okay, so in this video, what we did is we did a little overview of the vertebral column. We talked about cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal vertebrae. Those were listed from superior to inferior. We talked about the sternum, commonly known as the breastbone, the ribs, the skull, and how skull, the skull has cranial bones and facial bones. And then we talked about the hyoid bone. And so what I'll do now is I'll create some uh, little quizzes for you uh, where you can uh, practice the content for all the videos I showed you in this mini course. And of course, if you need more help, uh, head on over to anatomyonthego.com. I have all the structures labeled, save for a few extra ones on the skull that maybe aren't as relevant. Um, and if you need more help, feel free to let me know. Um, and so I will see you in the quiz where I help you practice this content.